when you're getting ready in the morning, when you're exercising, or when you just need a little boost. Download Mindset and listen to your favorite motivational speeches while getting ready for the day. What are you doing on your phone all day? There's probably something in within there that's a billion dollar opportunity. Same thing on what you're doing outside, same thing what you're watching on content, uh, and just being a little bit more curious and then taking action around that. Because we assume that you have to have this in order to make money. You have to have this job in order to make good money. You have to have this career if you want to be financially stable, but that's a complete lie. I think that is one of the biggest myths is saying, I got to work harder. I've never met a person working two or three jobs that actually was doing better because all you did was sell more time. I would say that everyone should be an entrepreneur, everyone, because if you get fired today, what's your backup plan? Go on indeed.com and pray. People that get wealthy, let me tell you right now, all they think about are solutions. They make no excuses. They take total responsibility for their lives. Building wealth is a very simple formula. Spend less than what you make and invest the difference, period. Now, if you wanna achieve more wealth, you need to invest more money. How can you invest more money? You can spend less money or you can earn more money. It's as simple as that. Now, there's a limit to how much less you can spend. There is a limit to how many costs you can cut, but there's no limit to how much money you can earn. So if you've already cut back as much as possible, there's no other way that you can cut back and you still wanna invest more and you wanna see the return sooner, then you gotta earn more money. Now again, how can you earn more money? Well, if you don't want to do it through starting a business or a side hustle, then you got to do it through your career. Are you at a job that will allow you to earn more money? Are you in a position that will allow you to earn more money? Maybe you have to get a certificate. Maybe you have to go back to school. Maybe you look for a different company. Maybe you look for a completely different career. Maybe you end on a second job. Now, I, I can't answer that question for you, but this is where you just have to be honest with yourself and see what type of life do you want to live and are you being honest with yourself? We're all given 24 hours in a day. If you're spending your time on Netflix, if you're spending your time playing video games, if you're spending all of your time doing things that don't add any value financially to your life, if you compare that to somebody who's now working, who's investing in the education, you're gonna see two completely different outputs. Everyone is born with the ability to apply effort. I can't really prove that you're supposed to be something, like you should be something, but I can say that with choice and effort, you can go really damn far. I believe that the difference between the really good ones and the ones that don't make it are uh, the ones that don't make it know how to be a victim. Uh, they feel sorry for themselves, they blame the next guy, and they don't take the responsibility as their own. And that's what an entrepreneur does. You're the boss, it's your problem, period. It's your, your problem, it rests with you. Now what are you going to do about it? I've come to learn that there's a huge difference between failing and failure. Failing is like stubbing your toe. You know, it happens. It's, it's, a, it's a verb, you know? It's just something you do. But failure is a noun. It's an identity. And I failed a lot, a lot, a lot along the way. But I was never a failure because I kept trying. I kept doing it. And I understood over time that my value wasn't representative of the things that worked or didn't work. If you decide that you want to run a marathon, oftentimes the person who stops you from running the marathon is nobody else but you. If you want to start a business, the person who's stopping you is the nobody else but you. If you decide to run the marathon, somebody's going to have an opinion of you while they're sitting on their couch, no less. They will have an opinion that you decided to run the marathon or you didn't decide to run the marathon. While somebody is sitting on their couch behind their keyboard, they're going to have an opinion of you starting a business or not starting a business. The fact of the matter remains, are you going to let somebody else's opinion dictate what you are going to do in your life and the reason you are put on this earth? Oftentimes, the person who stops ourselves from doing other things while we would like to point at other people because they have an opinion, it is actually us. We choose to believe, listen, adhere to somebody else's opinions, but somebody else's opinion of us doesn't pay our bills. The person who has an opinion about what it is you're doing was most likely never going to become a customer when it comes to the differences between the rich and the poor it doesn't start with how much money you make it doesn't start with what degree you have it doesn't start with who your parents are it doesn't come start with what background you have it starts with what mindset you have i'm not very nice or fair-minded with rich kids the problem with investing in a business owned by a rich kid is usually raise money already rather easily. 
It's not sweat equity. So you got a chunk of change to get started. Okay, that's nice. Now you would think that would make things easier. I think it makes things difficult. You don't spend your money wisely. It's Papa's money or your or your parents' friends' money or wherever you got it from. So it's not valuable money. And I've seen more people stand and say, well, we pivoted. We lost that and we pivoted. What happened to the guys that gave you the cash? What happened to them? No regard at all. Okay. When you get a poor kid, uh, they typically have something to prove. They really have to stretch every penny. It's their own money. They're dying just to get a little bit more. There's so much a greater need. And it's also a desire to do well in living in their life. They want to go on vacations. They too want to get a sports car. They want to get a nice apartment. These rich kids have had it all before. They've been on vacation everywhere. They've always had rich cars, rich parents. So I think it's so much harder for a rich kid to succeed as an entrepreneur. I just love poor kids. And I have to tell you, out of my whole portfolio, I don't have a single rich kid who succeeded. What held you back is what can push you forward. And that's conceptually, I, I feel like a lot of people could benefit if they really looked at the problems they're facing right now. There are massive solutions within those problems that can take you to a new level of life if you look at them from a different perspective. Now the question is, how can you make your hard work the most scalable? Because that's now what will take you from, okay, I don't want to be broke. So now you start working hard, which is great. The next question is, how can you make your hard work the most rewarding? What can you do to make the hard work give you the biggest dividends and the highest returns? And this is where people say work smart. You know, some people say work smart, don't work hard. I think that's a bunch of crap. I think you need to work smart and work hard. They go hand in hand because that hard work is going to allow you to scale your smart work. But you now have to understand, okay, I want to become more financially successful. So now how do I do that? What is the financial education? What am I working for? When I make more money, what am I going to do with this money? Where am I going to invest it? How am I earning this money? What can I do in terms of taxes to protect my wealth? What can I do with my investments to scale them? What can I do to build an asset? What can I do to build a business? What can I do to scale the assets that I do own? So now you start asking these questions. And I know this is getting very deep in some of these topics, but it all starts with that mindset of believing that is possible for you. Because if you don't believe it's possible for you, you're right. But if you believe it's possible for you, you're also right. And whatever your belief is, is going to change what output you take. In the time that are very hard moments, I always think to myself, like, there is no good reason. I had no business starting a business. And yet I started one. And I have found ways to create and make and sustain multiple seven figure revenue streams. And while that may or may not be the case for everybody else, I strongly believe that every single business owner, once armed with what they know how to do, and once armed with the marketing, and once armed with the discipline, and once armed with the consistency, that they too can build a six figure revenue stream. I believe that with every fiber in my bones, can you deliver on the promise that you are making? Can you sustain those customer relationships? Because if then I believe hands down, you can create a six-figure revenue stream. And in America, if you are creating a six-figure revenue stream, you are in the 1% of the 1%. But I don't think I'm special. I believe everybody can do this. I learned that you get back up and all the opportunities and getting back up. You just got to be a habit of getting up. You get up and you're going to find something that you could do something with. Just get up. Building wealth is a very simple formula. Spend less than what you make and invest the difference period. Now, if you want to achieve more wealth, you need to invest more money. How can you invest more money? You can spend less money or you can earn more money. It's as simple as that. Now, there's a limit to how much less you can spend. There is a limit to how many costs you can cut, but there's no limit to how much money you can earn. So if you've already cut back as much as possible, and there's no other way that you can cut back and you still want to invest more and you want to see the return sooner, then you got to earn more money. Now, again, how can you earn more money? Well, if you don't want to do it through starting a business or a side hustle, then you got to do it through your career. Are you at a job that will allow you to earn more money? Are you in a position that will allow you to earn more money? Maybe you have to get a certificate. Maybe you have to go back to school. Maybe you look for a different company. Maybe you look for a completely different career. Maybe you end on a second job. Now, I, 
I can't answer that question for you. But this is where you just have to be honest with yourself and see what type of life do you want to live? And are you being honest with yourself? I've never met a person working two or three jobs that actually was doing better because all you did was sell more time. Sleep less, stress more. Like yeah. that, I think that is one of the biggest myths. It's saying, I gotta work harder. We're exchanging our hours for dollars. Mm. You go to work every single day and you get paid, but what are wealthy people doing? They're not working just to use their money as a way to buy hours. They're using the money to buy their time back. Yes. Because now you can build things and build processes and invest your money because now you can use your money as a tool instead of as a fool. Education and information changes the conversation. Mm -hmm. If you change the conversation, you can change the compensation. Mm -hmm. If you can change the compensation, you can change the realization. If you understand money, you become financially educated, you're willing to talk about it. Well, now you can be financially stable doing whatever you want. And you can follow something you love and still be financially okay because we assume that you have to have this in order to make money. You have to have this job in order to make good money. You have to have this career if you want to be financially stable. But that's a complete lie. Yeah. But that goes down to not us being willing to talk about money. The reason why people are scared to talk about it is because we're insecure about it. And that's because we don't understand how money plays a part in our lives. It's one aspect. I say that there's four. You have to be physically healthy, mentally healthy, spiritually healthy, and then financially healthy. Mm -hmm. If you're not financially healthy, well, it can make everything else much more miserable because you can't pay your bills. But if you're financially healthy, you're rich, but you have nothing else, more money just makes you more miserable. Mm -hmm. So you need to live a holistic life and understand how money plays a part in your life. That way, the, the finances can have the biggest power. And then you understand that more money just amplifies who you are. It's like fire. It's like fuel. It fuels your fire. If you're a good person and you have more money, you have a tool to do more good. If you're a bad person and you have more money, you have a tool to do more bad. When I started teaching my homies about investing, I was like, yo, in order to be wealth, you got to own something. You cannot create wealth if you don't own nothing. If you don't own nothing, you're just a consumer. And if you don't own nothing and you're a consumer and you don't teach your kids how to own nothing, then now you have let them inherit it being a consumer. And if nobody breaks it, nobody's a disruptor, right? No one becomes a disruptor. So now it's, well, I don't, I've never seen wealth. So I probably can't be wealthy. Let me just live my life like whatever. Let me live my life for me. Let me just keep buying things, right? Let me, let me work hard every day. And the little time I do get some free cash, because I work so hard for it, I need some type of self-gratification. I need some type of reprieve from this. I don't care if I can't afford it. Sacrifice, what am I sacrificing for? It's hard paying these bills. It, no, I'm not about to do that. And so now Christmas becomes the day where we go broke buying liabilities, yeah. right? We, we have more month left than money all the time, mm -hmm. right? We are, again, we are financially deprived mm -hmm. because we have no relationship with money. Whereas this other class says, let me teach you about taxes. Let me teach you the importance of life insurance. Mm -hmm. Let me teach you the importance of this. Right. Let me teach you the importance of you may not like this person. Check this out. You may not like this person, but just because you don't like them don't mean you can't do business with them. Mm. Right. Because they have access to such and such that you don't. So what well, over here is if you don't like them, kill them. Mm. You don't like them. You know, have let them know you don't like them. Right. Let them know there's animosity right there because I wanted to like there's it. The way that the world is viewed is two completely different ways. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, this set of people, until they get exposed to it, until this class of people gets exposure, everyone will repeat that cycle. First thing everyone has to understand is what money is, and I, I don't mean in terms of like uh, in terms of wealth, but like money is just paper. It doesn't make you a good person. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just it's paper. And we talk about all these uh, insecurities people have with money. I grew up being told, don't talk about money. Don't worry about money. Don't stress about money. Yeah, here I am seeing my parents work their butt off every single day. 
So trying to make money, trying to make money. What is the strategy to get us out of this situation? And if we in a bad situation, sacrifices got to be made. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay, cool. How do we get out of this situation? All right, cool. So maybe you do take on another way. Maybe you do take on another job. Right. Okay, that's cool. How long are we taking on that job? And why are we using this other job specifically for paying off debt or getting me out of this hole? Because the objective is not to work the two jobs, right? Or I would say the world we in right now, that smartphone is so amazing, so powerful. So find a way to create some passive income for that. Like it, it, it's, it's limitless. Yeah. And you can use your money as a tool to buy your time back, or you can use your money as a tool to make you and attract you more money. That's what wealthy people do. And so you want to be able to use money in that way. Invest in what you understand. Mm -hmm. So if Not you wear so Nikes, yeah, you should be looking at apparel brands, mm -hmm. right? Nike, Lululemon, because you understand that, right? If you a workout person, then you should be looking at like Planet Fitness, things like that. Like if you are a tech person, if you use an Apple phone, you should 100% be on looking at Apple, right? If you're a car person, like. But one of the things I like now is fintech, mm -hmm. financial technology. So everybody uses PayPal or Square, right? That is the way money is changing. Mm -hmm. The way we use money is completely different now. So I think everybody should be investing in FinTech right now, 100%. But I look at it as, so every investor has what's called an investor identity. Like what you're willing to risk, your risk tolerance. If you're a doctor, then you know more about medicine. So you should be in, biotech, uh, pharmaceuticals, healthcare. You should, that should be your thing. Invest where your strong points are. I remember Warren Buffett said for a long time, he didn't understand technology. So he didn't buy technology. He didn't buy Apple stock until like 2017, right? So I learned that from him. He says, I put things in a too hard box. If it's too hard for me to understand, I don't, I don't do it. And what I love about investing is, it's not an IQ sport. It's not about who has the biggest IQ mm -hmm. at all, because it's more so about how do I stay in my circle of competence and what I understand, because that's what gives me the advantage. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be now just, just buying a whole bunch of Gucci and Louis Vuitton. It's now actually improving your life. There are almost certainly a lot of things that you're doing that are going to keep you broke. I've done a lot of things, man. I've been swinging for a long time and that's something that's available to everyone. And, and I, I do think that's missed out on that. There's a lot of ordinary people being rich and being successful and, and people think it's an exclusive club and that's just not true. There's a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. No one's ready for a thing until they believe that they can acquire it. Now you're in a solution oriented mindset and people that get wealthy, let me tell you right now, all they think about are solutions. How do I solve this problem? Because you are, if you're wealthy, you must remember you're, pay, you're paid in direct proportion to the difficulty of the problems you solve. And if that's true, you better get very good at solving very difficult problems. And if you have something that's holding you back, like I'm not as smart as a lot of people, and that really pisses me off. But the reality is, pissing and moaning about it is not going to make me any smarter. All I can do is go make the most of what I have. Entrepreneurs have one thing in common. They keep going. They'll change the rules. They'll reinvent the rules. You know, they don't just take one answer. So a real entrepreneur, it really makes no difference which country you're in. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just a mindset. You know, it's F you. You mess with me, I'll find a way around it. They make no excuses. They take total responsibility for their lives. In fact, many people that fall into that category will take responsibility for things that clearly don't even have anything to do with themselves. People are spending all of their money. Death habit number one, you're spending all of your money on liabilities and not assets. So the key is to understand what an asset is, to understand what a liability is, and to buy appropriately. An asset is something that when you buy, it's going to go up in value and not cost you money, or even pays you money. More money, obviously, than it costs you. If you have a liability, it's the exact opposite. So the classic example of a liability is a car payment. The second you drive a car off the lot, 
it's going down in value and with very rare exception, it is never going to go back up. So it's going down in value and you've got to keep making those payments. So you've got money going out while value is declining. Another one that people often think of as an asset, but is usually a liability, is your own home. Now, the reason that your own home is so frequently a liability is odds are you have a mortgage, odds are it's the most expensive thing in your life, and it's not like you can just get out from under that liability, especially if the bottom falls out. You're gonna have property tax depending on where you live, and you're gonna have upkeep no matter where you live. So now you're pouring money into this thing, and maybe the value is going up, but maybe not always. And between the property taxes and the upkeep, you may be paying more than the value is going up over time, especially if you account for opportunity cost. So the odds of your house after taxes, fees, uh, upkeep, all of that being a better use of capital if you're living in it, being a better use of capital than taking that same money and putting it into uh, an index fund or something like that, a diversified portfolio, let's say, the odds of the house returning more on that are very low. Unless, obviously, if you get into rental properties and things like that and you're not living in it, so now it can actually generate cash flow, well, then it's just a math equation. A lot of people are chasing content creation or they were chasing crypto last week, or they were chasing blogging years ago and now AI everyone's chasing. And so what I'd recommend for other people out there, and I've been able to do this literally, fuck man, I've, ch I've chosen so many trillion dollar markets uh, to be around. And a lot of my success is just because I'm in the market and the market does well, but I'm curious about these things, number one. So I was curious about social networking and I was like, oh, that's big. Cause I got onto it and I finally, I was able to see like, wow, you can connect with the entire world even though there wasn't really the entire world at that point. So curious, same with mint.com. I was like, man, money, I think worldwide, it's pretty important. I think there's going to be something if you have a free money tool, that's going to be big. Same thing then with Facebook games, that was going to be big. Then I did payments for games, that was big. And then I did kind of a Groupon business, which is, became AppSumo, that was big. Then we built sumome.com, that was big, which is a software tool. So ideally, number one, you're curious. So I can talk about my crypto thing, because I think that's kind of an interesting example of it. Number two, how do you get a part of it today, right now, not how? Don't worry that you don't have a website, don't worry you don't have a big social media presence but what can you take action on to put yourself in that space? So can you be in a community online? Can you geographically move? Can you start creating in that space? So I think people are curious maybe and they, they can find it, but they don't necessarily try it and understand it and they don't do anything about it. So even with crypto got involved, I heard about it in 2012, didn't do anything. I thought it was stupid. And then in 2016, I had to buy an illegal uh, NFL stream. That's how I got into crypto. And so I bought this illegal NFL stream on a website, seasonsforyou.com, and I saw the power of what this could be. And then I started buying at that point. And that's where it's now become a multi-million dollar portfolio. And I think the biggest thing for everyone out there is, what are you doing on your phone all day? There's probably something within there that's a billion dollar opportunity. Same thing on what you're doing outside, same thing what you're watching on content, uh, and just being a little bit more curious and then taking action around that. I would say that everyone should be an entrepreneur, everyone, because if you get fired today, what's your backup plan? go on indeed.com and pray like having an entrepreneurship where you can have your own business. And if you start it right now, not how you just get started. And that a lot of what, what we cover that is exactly a million dollar weekend. You could do it in a weekend, which everyone has, they can change their life in 48 hours. You have the option. And a lot of people, let's take appsumo.com. We have a lot of people who have very successful side businesses and they're happy with their day jobs. And that's great. And there's other people like myself that were always frustrated having a day job. And so I wanted to create work that I didn't have to work at. And I, do believe there's a, a misconception and something that most people get wrong is that you can't do what you enjoy or passion or dream about and make a lot of money doing it. I don't believe that. But when I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And the reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. So that's why lesson number one in Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs. We acquire real estate. I don't invest in the stock market. So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make, and how much I pay in taxes. And because I'm an entrepreneur, as well as an investor in real estate, I pay zero tax. So every time I make, let's say, a million dollars as an entrepreneur, I immediately invest it in real estate and I have a four to one step up. 
So I put a million dollars in real estate. I got four, four hundred. I got four million from the bank. That's why I love banks. But the banks are screwing everybody else. You know, terrible. But it's good for me. We are all the same. Everywhere in the world, I don't care if you go into China, go into Kosovo, go into Buenos Aires, go into New York. We are all the same. We look different, we sound different, but when you get past the culture, and culture is nothing but group habit, that's exactly what it is. When you get past the culture, we are all the same. There is one mind. There is not millions of minds. There is one, and we are an individualized expression of it. And when we tap into that universal mind, it operates by law. The idea must move into form. That's one of the first laws of the universe: the perpetual transmutation of energy. You understand that winter never follows winter. When the tide goes out, it always comes back in. I got a beautiful Japanese maple just outside my studio at home. Every fall, the leaves fall off that, but every spring they come back. All the great paintings, Rembrandt, Van Gogh, all of them, they were inspired to do the great work. We have to understand that whatever Rembrandt or Van Gogh used, we have available to us. We're God's highest form of creation. Spirit flows to and through us. It's our responsibility to decide what we're going to do with it. I think we've got an obligation to do great work. We're only here for a short time, not a long time, and we've got the faculties and the ability to do great work. I think we should. So money doesn't bring you happiness. It's never made me happy. I don't measure happy. What do you measure?、Uh, I measure accomplishments. I measure targets. I measure, you know, who who I'm helping. Things that I can actually physically measure. You know, the reality is most of us don't dream big.、Mm. You got the mindset. Are you looking? Are you paying attention? You can do it, bro. You you got to give something up. It's not you have to add something. You always have to give something up. Really, I have. I've never been able to go from here to there, and not give up something. They got me here. If you're going to go from zero to a millionaire, when you get to a millionaire, you if you want to go to the next level, you want to go to ten million, you will have to give up the millionaire life. That's why I said I got to hold myself accountable to the goal. If I'm at to keep reselling myself on this goal. People want to create wealth for themselves. It's not just money; it's people. Not how much money I have. I mean, we all know about the the wealthy person that, that has no friends. He's on a yacht by himself, and that's not wealth, right? It's just a bunch of money and material collections. To me, there's no way to create real wealth by just going inside. You got to go. I, I got to add people. How do you get people to know who you are? I say almost yes to almost everything. Why do you say yes to everything? Because because it connects me to another person. I need people to get to know who I am. I'm going to become somebody. I want to contribute more. I don't think about I want to be more happy. I'm not thinking about joy. I'm not thinking about contentment. I'm not thinking. About, I'm thinking about action. I want the action. I want the grind. I want the possibility. I want legacy. I'm trying to figure out how to extend a hundred years. How could Grant Cardone still be relevant in 2123? Do I want more happiness? Dude, I want more time. Is what I want, and I want more health. Would time and health bring you more happiness? As long as I had people around me that I want to be around. I don't like being around people that don't do stuff. I don't like people that talk about doing something and don't. I don't like being around people that can't pay bills and can't throw in and can't contribute because I know they can. Most of the people watching right now, everything you have budgeted for in your life, you can pay for. It's the things you didn't budget for, the big dream. But everything else, you got covered. Everything people pay attention to. House note, car note, electric bill, water bill, basics. Everything gets covered. What if you just added a whole bunch of other stuff to the list? What if we were all brought up to say, "Hey, we're going to cover all this stuff." People would be even more productive. 
What would you say are the top three ways, the best ways to multiply money then? Get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. First, you got to make it. I mean, I got to collect it. I got to collect some. Then I got to figure out, okay, this pays for this basic living. Everything above that, don't spend any more money. Like the rest of it, if this is four grand and I make seven, the entire three has got to go into investments. Every month. Every single month. At some point, you got to quit being a saver. You got to start being an investor. This is what we should have been taught in school, man. This is what we should have been taught as kids. Like, how do I do money? You do it with time. Okay, you don't do it with a job. You're not going to get you're not going to get eight hundred twenty three thousand dollars a year at a job. There's no job that's going to hire you and pay you eight twenty three without you having to go back to college and spend time and invest money. Mm. Just doesn't work like that. What do you think people in the middle class are doing that they should shift in their mindset in order to start getting out of that? Well, you don't borrow money to go to college. Why would you trade five or six or seven years of the income? Time is money. So I wouldn't go to college. I would never buy a home. I would never put debt on a home. If I bought a home, I wouldn't put debt on it. And these are nevers for me on the come up. On the come up, yeah. On the come up. Once this, you have the cash. Dude, once you're, 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 if you're wealthy and you want to go buy homes and you know, would buy yachts and stuff, go do whatever you wanted to do. But, but on the come up, uh, you would never spend your income. You would never spend primary income on improving the quality of your life. You would only invest. And that's what I'm trying to teach my kids. Like Sabrina's, I let her pay all the bills. I've been doing this since she was probably six. You pay the bill. We don't give them an allowance. I don't really? think any kid should be given an allowance. Interesting. Why not? Yeah. If they want money, they become an employee of the company. They work for the company. We give them a series of things to do. We pay them once a year. Okay. We give them a big check at the beginning of the year. That money goes into Cardone Capital. Wow. And they live off the distributions. Come on. Sometimes they'll get a bonus for doing extra stuff. But they don't get the money. They never get the money. It's invested and they get that the money is invested. They get the distributions. They will create wealth over the next 10 years, but it'll be their own wealth. It's not something I gave them. Well, if you could only teach your kids three lessons about money, yeah. what would those lessons be? People, number one, meet, meet people. Every, no one's a stranger. It's a, it, the money's a people game. Two, once you get it, don't lose it. And number three, um, invest in things where you can never lose your capital. Now, the person watching this, she's a waitress and she's got two kids at home. She's like, I'm never going to make 800. It's because you already gave up on the idea. Like, you never, you never, you never said that's the target. And you keep thinking you got to wait tables and you, you quit already. How many, how many people are in debt in America? 40% of people that make a million dollars a year still are living paycheck to paycheck. 60%? 40%. But that, that's not because of inflation. That's because they spent money they shouldn't have spent. They thought they were entitled to because they're millionaires. They live above their means. They live above their investments, not their means. How can we shift the relationship to money that we have so we can have a better experience emotionally and spiritually about money? Anything you're hiding, you're going to have problems with. The secret keeps you sick. First thing I look at every day is my money. I have a great relationship with my money. I'm not just going to think about it. I'm going to be somebody today. I'm going to grow into who I should be. What I've done already is impossible. From where you came from and all and these from things. From where I yeah. came from, I should be dead. I should have been dead at 25 years old or in jail. Messed up forever. You know, instead I became this guy. And I, and I mean, I'm grateful. And I had, I don't know that I had any breaks. I know when people say, oh, you had luck. I'm like, you grinded. Right. I've been grinding. And I'm proud of the grind. But I wanted to turn into something more than money. I'm going to feel good about a lot of places I go to and a lot of people I meet because I made more contributions than I didn't. I, I gave more than I took. If you're lazy, 
I mean, there's nothing that can help you. Um, Andrew Carnegie said it best. Um, Tom Watson Sr., the founder of IBM, said it best again. Henry Ford, one, said it again, and I've said it. If you have to motivate employees, they're not worth having. Nobody ever had to motivate me in my life. And my big one of my big bosses on Wall Street, who's the godfather to our, our, our youngest son, and they, he hates hearing this. When your dad was 26, 27, 28, we would have to have security drag him out of the office because he'd sleep at his desk for seven or eight days. His secretary used to get out and buy new shirts and underwear, and he'd sponge bath in the men's room. I mean, our kids don't like hearing that story, but it happens to be true. Nobody ever had to motivate me. I've never, ever been corrected for making a mistake in my 51 years in business. Never once. I'm always the most prepared in the room. Always, even now. Did you know that uh, Elon Musk doesn't hand? Bill Gates doesn't chill. Yet millennials, that's what they want to do. So if you have surrounded yourself with four or five or six people that um, want to hang, uh, when you're hanging, you're not, now I know you're supposed to be decompressing and I, I understand all that. I don't believe, if you have to decompress at the weekend, or go on a holiday, because holidays are really important here, I mean in the UK. You know, everybody because they lost the down payment and because of COVID. But if you have to um, go on a holiday and decompress, you got the wrong job, or you don't love what you do. I've never, you know, from 1971 to 1997, I had to take a day off. Not a day off, and I got married on one of those days. Did you know that 21% of all the people that bought Bitcoin? in the last 12 months here in the UK, don't have a clue what Bitcoin is. Did you know that the average price for uh, uh, an order in 2019 for Bitcoin was 280 pounds, which is about 350 bucks. In 2021, the last 12 months, it's about $100 more. So they're spending $500 or less how are you going to change your life with 500 bucks investment? Even if Bitcoin went to a billion dollars, it's not going to change many lives. Find something you love. Find something you're passionate about. And only surround yourself with other people that are passionate about the same thing. And then it, if it's work to you, it's not worth pursuing. I don't consider myself working. I consider myself, this is uh, uh, like a hobby. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. I had a young lady interviewing me that explained to me why millennials buy these stocks that are worth nothing. And she says, basically, we don't have any option, legal option, how to get rich. I used to give a lecture in the universities, wealth, risk, reward, not. The system that was devised 70 uh, years ago after World War II, you go to work with a company, you work 30, 40, 45 years, you get a pension, you don't get a gold watch as nice as mine. Um, and you can live in a picket house with 2.4 dogs, uh, 6.4 uh, uh, grandchildren, and uh, hopefully your original wife. Well, that model is dead. That is impossible anymore. And on top of it, you have 150 to $250,000 in debt for going to school. Some kids will be 45 years old and still be paying off student debt. Well, that, that's a load of crap. You want people with a like mind and it, that are better than you, smarter than you, more intelligent than you to get on your bus. And don't be so con concerned about what you're gonna do with those people, but you wanna, you know, the joint brain is, you know, there's nothing the joint brain, collective brain or brains can't overcome. And I give the example of the uh, atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project, and they were put together uh, and they were told, we need, uh, we need to develop a weapon of mass destruction, which they didn't call it that back in those days, uh, in the middle 40s, to end the war in the Pacific. 
uh, and they did. They didn't know if it was implode or explode, but they did. But if, you're, if, if your team doesn't look like that, then you should, I won't say you should give serious thought, you should just change. Number one, uh, you want to be in a business where there's big margins, big gross margins. Not, for example, retail, forget about it. Uh, restaurants, forget about it. Things that, uh, uh, you want big margins. Uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, most internet businesses have big margins. That's why you flock to it. First of all, you want between 20 and 40% gross margin. So even if you mismanage it, you'll come out with a decent net margin. Number two, if you're not first, you have to be different. What I see kids doing is just replicating the same business idea over and over again. How are you different? Well, um, who's your market? Do you really understand who your market is? More money than you think being made in green. Uh, I'm, I'm not a believer that the world's gonna end in, uh, because of global warming, but, um, but there's little niches. Uh, I would look at government contracts because uh, unfortunately the Canadian government, the US government, the British government doesn't have a level of expertise that you have to have to bid on government contracts. So that means you, young lady, could bid on government contracts in Canada for whatever. There are three million contracts daily being let in the Canadian government. There's 10 million contracts daily in the US government. We've had kids that never attended the seminar that have made tens of millions uh, off government contracts, but most kids want it to be handed to them on a platter. Most kids think they go to a three-day seminar in Montreal that, that it's gonna be the end-all be-all and they're gonna uh, turn that $3,000 or $1,800 into millions and that's just not true. Follow what you're passionate about, what you love. You, if, if It's not work if you love what you're doing. Okay, most people when I say they're living quiet lives of desperation is because they're involved in a business or a, and or a job uh, that uh, they don't enjoy, they don't, they're not passionate about. Okay, so if you found something that you're, you're passionate about, that it doesn't matter if you work three hours a day or 13 hours a day, that's where you start. And most people aren't there. Most people have to find that. So what should we do, Gary V? Let's wrap this up. Yeah, what should we up. do? What should people do? To me, hustle is maximizing the energy you're putting into somebody. I'm blown away by people saying that they're hustling and they want to achieve these great things and then their actions don't match. It's like saying you really want to lose weight while eating a Big Mac, right? So to me, hustle would be putting all your effort into achieving the goal at hand. And for me, that means making every minute count. There are a million reasons why not, but there's one great reason why, which is you've just gotta persevere, no matter what it is. It's just the way it is. It's hard being an entrepreneur. It's hard building a business. Everybody thinks it's so easy that there's an entitlement. There's a disaster. Zinging China, here comes my US zing right now. There is an insane generation of 18 to 25 year olds right now that think they're entitled to having a business because they saw the social network movie and everybody's decided if you're a kid and you know what tech is, because you used Instagram early on, you're entitled to actually build a business. Building a business is hard. And you know what makes it really hard? Everything that happens every day of every moment. So, you can pick time, you can pick money as the one or two things that you think stop you from winning your game, but the truth is there's a million reasons. 99% of businesses go out of business for a reason, and that reason is it's hard. Hustle is putting it all on the line. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all into the parenting of your children, the building of your businesses, the philanthropy that you wanted to do. Whatever you define, it's just you know, all in, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy and in execution. Don't complain about it, you've made that choice. Don't bullshit me. Like you wanna spend more time with your family? Spend more time with your family. This is back to what we said about keyboard warriors. I'm trying to be very careful about what I'm saying versus what I'm doing right. because that's how you get exposed. And I don't mean like people calling you out and being like, you suck. I mean to yourself. I don't wanna be exposed by myself. It's, it's, it's looking yourself in the mirror and saying like, am I doing this right? So to me, there's so many people that are talking shit about how big of an entrepreneur they're gonna be and how much they're gonna achieve and they don't work on weekends. 
you know, I worked every Saturday of my 20s. Like, and I talk to 20 year old entrepreneurs every single day. Lately, I've been saying to them, this Saturday, you're gonna have more time off than I've had in my entire 20s on a Saturday. So like, before you tell me how you're gonna be bigger than me, start thinking about what you're actually doing. For the first two years that I ran VaynerMedia, we had no rent. We first worked out of a conference room, a conference room. We then worked out of a co-working space before the whole WeWork and co-working space revolution and I bartered my time to help that company in exchange for a very small space. We didn't buy furniture, we scrapped. And I'd already made it, I was already rich. And we scrapped. And so the biggest thing that I want to implore everybody here today to do is to take a step back and think about how fancy are they. Are you willing to be really, really, really ghetto? Do you really need that chair? Do you really need that piece of technology? Do you really need to fly that class? Like, I I just think that we're living through an incredibly fancy culture of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship and CEO status is quite sexy. People are selling a lifestyle that is filled with lots of fun and trips and, and champagne and bikinis and bling bling and all sorts of horse shit, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I just think that that era of this era is gonna come to an end somewhere within the next five years and very honestly, I just don't want a lot of people in this room that dream to build their own businesses to have to go work at a bank or go work at a retail store. And so I would highly recommend something that I think is stunningly not talked about enough, which is if you're building a business, you have to be making money. Everybody thinks they're gonna be Zucks. Everybody thinks they're gonna build Snapchat. Go look at the data. The data shows that the far majority of this room will not succeed, not even close, to building an actual business. And I don't come here to be somber. I come here to remind you that there's only one thing you can do. The only thing you can do that can trump the moment mommy and daddy had sex to make you. The only thing that can trump that, the only thing that can trump your DNA, the only thing that is controllable, if you want it, if you want this, is work. If you've got a big mouth, and a lot of you do here, search the hashtag, and a lot of you say CEO, founder, owner. I call that big mouth. If you've got the audacity to do it, and, and so many of you have heard this from me, when I audit you, and I do, because I'm curious, it's how I learn. People talk a big game. I especially love when somebody hits me up on social like, Gary Vee, you're gonna buy the Jets, I'm gonna buy the Rams, you know? <laughs> you know, everybody's buying a sports team. And I love, and I love to look at what that person does, and, and then I'll DM that person and be like, yo bro, nobody, nobody, unless they were a trust fund baby, ever bought the Rams when they go skiing for a week when they're 24. Nobody you know, nobody you know, nobody you know has become successful outside of it being given to them from their family. Nobody you know has actually created success without working their face off. It doesn't exist. So you can sit and talk about luck, and you can sit and talk about this, that, or the other thing, but I promise you, the only controllable thing you have is your work ethic. What is the definition of winning? And I think we all have different definitions, right? And I think that one of the things that I also wanna say is that I'm getting scared that a lot of people that are following my journey hear me talking about buying the New York Jets, and I do aspire to buy a $3 billion sports franchise. I do, it, it is what I want. It's, you can look at my fifth grade yearbook long before business was cool, it's what I wanna do. But I'm awfully scared that it's pressuring the people that follow me into trying to achieve things that they don't necessarily want, they just think it's the thing you do if you're trying to be a successful business person. Let me promise you something. I know tens of thousands of people, and I know thousands of people extremely well, I know hundreds of people deeply well. There is no correlation between how much money someone makes and their level of happiness. I have friends who make $47,000 a year and are the happiest people I know. Their work-life balance is on point, they're part of two soccer teams, they play video games, they watch every show they want, they take two vacations that they scrap together and they're freaking happy as hell. 
and I know tons of people who I grew up with in the Silicon Valley boom who have hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank account and are as miserable and as lonely and as broken as you'll ever see. So I implore all of you to please reverse engineer and figure out who you are. You got a job to do. It's time for you to get it done. Did you not hear what Michael Jordan said? Some people want it to happen. Some people wish it would happen. But the greats, they go out and make it happen. Setbacks won't stop them. Doubt won't stop them. Fear won't stop them. You won't stop them. So many people say they want to be where the money resides. So many people say they want to be where greatness resides. But so many people refuse to do what they need to do on a daily basis. Don't tell me what you gonna do. Tell me you got it done. Don't tell me you want to rise above the pack. Don't tell me you want to be ahead of the rest. When your daily actions are below average at best. See, the late great Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. So there will be days that you don't feel like getting out of that bed. There will be days that you don't feel like getting started. Let me give you a little piece of advice. Because sometimes you got to trick yourself and say, self, I'm just going to do one minute. And once that one minute turn into two, and once that two minutes turn into three, and once that three minutes turn into four, and once that four minutes turn into five, and then five turns into 10, and then 10 turns into 30, and then 30 minutes turns into an hour. And when you look up, you're hoisting the banner because you won that day. I don't care what you gotta do. If you gotta put your favorite music on, if you gotta toss your hair back in the bun, put yourself in a position to do the work. Put yourself in a position to get the job done. Put yourself in a position to not stop. Until what you had written down on that list of things to do today is completed and then some. Will you put in the work until you find your yes? Will you put in the work until you find your bless? Will you put in the work until you alleviate all stress, all strife? Will you put in the work until you live in your best life? You got a job to do. Get it done. I love when T.D. Jake says, don't tell me what you're going to do. Tell me you got it done. See, the resilient mindset keeps going and going and going. When so many others will quit, I need you to tap into your inner grind hard. I need you to tap into your inner go get it. I need you to tap into your never quit. I need you to tap into your resiliency. I need you to tap into the mindset of getting the job done no matter what. You gotta pay the price to live a next level life. It's time for you to get off your hind parts and make it happen. Don't you realize there's millions of lives you can be impacting? But you're only touching a fraction and that's on a low level. You don't have a story, you're not leaving a legacy because you struggle with adversity, you struggle with the setbacks. Don't you get it? The resilient mindset knows that a thousand no's may come but it keeps grinding tap into your inner grind hard like you want to live so many people resort to not giving their best and then they wonder why they have less than the next man or the next woman who made the choice to sacrifice and refuse the advice of those that wanted them to go hang out at the party, those that invited them to the game because they weren't where they wanted to be and they had a mission and their vision told them if they put in the work now, the day will come where they could go to any party they wanted to. Matter of fact, they could build a club at their house. They could build a club at their mansion. Get it done now! Or die irrelevant. Or die broke. 
If you're not strong enough to say no, well, you know you got work to do, and your friends or family approach you to do something that you really have absolutely no time to do, but you do it anyway. That's a setback. And it's gonna take you longer to reach your desired destination. See, the mindset of success shuts down the negative vibes and proceeds to grind to win by only aligning with positive tribes. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. It's not gonna happen overnight. Success can be a bitter pill to swallow. Success will push you to your limits. It takes time. It's not easy. Life often gets in the way. But no excuses. I need you to still get it done. The late great Jackie Robinson said, this ain't fun. But you watch me. I will get it done. And that's the thought process. That's the mindset you have to subscribe to. If you're trying to achieve any type of success, the greats will tell you about some rough patches. The greats will tell you about some tough days. The greats will tell you about some adversity. The greats will tell you about some setbacks. The greats will tell you about some failures. But the greats will also tell you this. They kept going. They kept going. They kept going. They refused to lose. They refused to quit. They refused to give up. And they lived by the motto, I will win. I will get it done. No excuses. The late, great Muhammad Ali said, you don't lose if you get knocked down. You lose if you stay down. There will be days that you don't achieve your desired outcome. And that's what separates the winners from the losers. See, losers give up, winners give all. The late, great Jim Rohn said, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Where champions reside, where greatness resides, there is absolutely no excuses. This is a great day to win.